We appreciate your purchase. I wanted to do something different to help you have a better garden. All seed packs basically say the same thing, something like this. In well-prepared soil, plant your seeds a quarter inch deep after the danger of frost has passed. The only thing that really varies is the distance between seeds, maybe a little bit in the depths of planting, the distance between rows, and maybe they give you a vague map that tells you when to plant your seeds. This video does more than that. I'm going to give you about a five minute overview on planting and tending seeds in the garden so they germinate, grow, and get off to a great start. First, let me show you how to direct sow the seeds in a ground or a container using the flat to my right. And then I'm going to go over in more detail all the different steps that you really need to follow to have a great garden this year. So it's really more than just putting a seed in the ground and letting it go. I want to show you how to take care of the seeds so you have a great gardening experience. Winter squash is a warm weather crop. They don't like the cold. They can't take a frost. You grow them in the summer when it's warm. And the reason they're called winter squash is because they grow really well during the warm weather. You harvest as fall approaches, but the acorn squash in this case, or the winter squash, can be stored for six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, or 12 weeks, and you eat them through late fall and even into the winter. That's why they're called winter squash. There are many different kinds of winter squash. Their seeds look similar to this. For your acorn squash, you're gonna to wanna to plant two seeds, about one inch deep. They prefer soil temperature that's 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and they really like the days when the days are staying 70 degrees or warmer. Two seeds, about one inch deep. When the plants are about an inch tall, thin to a single plant. Plant these every 18 to 24 inches. You don't want to do them in rows. You're going to have to trellis them. Please check out the video description for more information on trellising and different trellising examples. To set up a basic trellis, you want six to eight foot posts and you just put a space in between them of four feet. And then you can run string or wire every six inches to give the acorn squash something to crawl up. You can use chicken wire or any kind of fencing. Along that four feet of fencing, plant your seeds every 18 to 24 inches. If you're just getting started, maybe just grow two plants up the fencing. If you have more experience, you could grow more plants. They'll grow really well. They germinate quickly, but they are susceptible to pests and disease. The best strategy to manage that is to plant your acorn squash every four weeks. So you're going to have to set up a trellising system in different places, but you're putting the plants out every four weeks. And what that does is that gives you nice growth in several parts of your garden and the plants are started at different times. When you have pests and disease that roll in and affect your winter squash, the new plants ensure that you're going to get a harvest. And it works basically like this. If you plant your first wave in May, and then you have pests and disease that show up in June, they could impact your acorn squash that are growing. If you plant some acorn squash later in June, they take off, they start growing, but the pests and diseases life cycle has passed, and those plants aren't affected by those problems. And sometimes in different gardening zones, you have to figure out when's the best time to plant acorn squash and other garden plants based on when diseases and pests come and go. I don't really recommend growing acorn squash in a container, but if you wanted to give it a try, you'd want at least a 20 gallon container. You just want to grow a single plant in there. Again, plant two seeds, thin to the strongest, and you would have to set some sort of trellising system up in the container so that acorn squash would grow upwards. Check out the rest of the video for tips on helping you start seeds in your garden. Using the seed flat to my right, I pretty much showed you how to plant seeds in the ground or in containers. It's really not a lot of information that you find on the back of a seed pack. Pretty much it's loosen the soil four to six inches deep, mix in some compost, plant the seeds to this depth with this spacing after the danger of frost has passed. If that's all you need, thank you so much for your purchase and please check out my YouTube channel, The Rusted Garden, for more in-depth videos on vegetable gardening. If you want to stick around for about five more minutes, I want to go over the information that I would have found most valuable when I first started vegetable gardening. I want to talk about frost dates and soil temperatures, basic watering and fertilizing, and basic information on starting your seeds indoors. You may want to start some seeds indoors, grow transplants, and get them out into the ground. I think this information will help you be extremely successful in your vegetable garden. Frost dates are really important because they really tell you when you can start your garden. Cool weather crops 
love the cooler weather, they can take a frost. Your warm weather crops cannot take a frost. They're tender, so if a frost comes, it's going to kill them off. And if you're lucky enough, you can grow the cool weather crops again in the fall. So the first thing you have to do is figure out when your last frost date is and when your first frost date is. And you simply put in where you're at followed by the words last frost date or where you're at followed by the words first frost date. And you're gonna get that you know, in an internet search and it'll give you your average date of when those temperatures show up in your area. Once you have those dates, you can start planting your cool weather crops before the frost is completely gone because it can take the frost. You wanna plant your warm weather crops well after the frost date so they're not damaged. And then in the fall, you can start your cool weather crops while it's still warm, but they can grow into that first frost date. They can take a frost. So the frost dates are really gonna give you an idea of how to plant your garden. So I know it gets confusing. So the short version is cool crops in the spring when frost is still around, warm crops later spring and summer when frost is gone, and then you can plant the cool crops again in the fall when the frost is returning. So now let's talk about soil temperature and how that affects your cool crops and your warm crops. Soil temperature can be confusing, but it's really important. And we're just talking about the top four inches of the soil. That's where you're gonna plant your seeds and you want the right soil temperature so that your seeds are germinating in anywhere from five you know, to 10 days. If you put seeds into the ground when it's too cold, when they're put in the ground at a temperature they don't like, they're gonna sit there. And if they're sitting there two weeks or three weeks, there's a greater risk for them to get a mold or a fungus or to basically just rot and die. So timing is really, really important. Your cool weather crops like soil temperature that's 40 or 50 degrees. Your warm weather crops like soil temperature that's in the upper 60s, 70 degrees. How do you figure that out? Again, you don't have to go measure the soil temperature and there's no place to look it up online. You're just looking for the nights to start warming up. So early spring, later winter, when the temperatures at night are getting into the 40 or 50 degrees, you're getting 50, 60 degree days with some rain. That's what's gonna warm up the soil to that 40, 50 degrees Fahrenheit for your cool weather crop seeds. Same thing for the warm weather crops. As you get into spring or later spring, when the nights are getting into the 50s and 60 degrees, the day temperatures are getting into the 70s, you're getting warmer rains. That top four inches is gonna get up to 60, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect time to plant your warm weather crop seeds. And you can just look at a historical weather map and just see you know, when the nights are beginning to warm up and the days are beginning to warm up. Now, why is this important? If you put a pea seed, for instance, into the ground when the soil temperature is in the upper 30s or 40s, the pea seed may sit there. It's not gonna germinate. They're really susceptible to fungus and mold and they're gonna die off. If you put a warm weather crop like tomato or pepper seeds into the ground when the ground temperature is 40 or 50 degrees, those seeds are just gonna sit there. So you're not really getting a jump on the season and you're not really saving any time. They may sit there three weeks or four weeks until the soil temperature gets into the 60s and 70s and then they're gonna germinate. So there's no rush to get your seeds out and into the ground. You wanna get them out there when the soil temperature is right for the cool weather crops or the warm weather crops. Please check out the video description for more detailed information on the topics that I'm talking about. Watering and fertilizing covers an entire year in the garden, but I just wanna focus on what do you need to do at the beginning when you're putting the seeds into the ground. If you have compost, you wanna put down one to two inches of compost across your bed and work it into the top four to six inches of the soil. You want that top six inches to 12 inches to be loose, especially if you're growing carrots or other root crops. You can also purchase organic granular fertilizer. It comes in pelleted form and you would just follow the instructions, cover the growing area and mix that into the surface. That will set up your bed. What I recommend is a water soluble fertilizer. That's a fertilizer you mix in with water and then you just water in the plant as it's growing over time. Water soluble fertilizer is fertilizer, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium that's immediately ready to the plant. So let's go back to the seed planting. Once the seeds are planted as directed earlier in this video, just gently water it in with a watering can or a gentle spray nozzle 
soak the top two to four inches of the soil. You really want the moisture in there when you put the seeds in the ground. Water will be absorbed by the seeds. That triggers the whole process for germination. And then you're probably gonna to wanna to water that planting area, your containers, every two to three days. If it's cooler, less often. If it's warmer, a little bit more often. But it's really important that you just manage the water well for the first really two weeks after you put the seeds in the ground. You wanna make sure they get what they need with respect to water, germinate, set up the root system, and then sprout or germinate. Seeds will live off of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that are already in the ground when they germinate, and they also live off the seed coat. So about two weeks after germination, you can mix any water-soluble fertilizer into your gallon watering can and just give your plants a drink. After that, about once a month, give them some water-soluble fertilizer and that will keep your seed starch growing well and that will help establish wonderful plants for the rest of the season. And again, just to review, water your newly planted seeds every two to three days based on temperature. And then after they germinate, water your seedlings in in about two weeks with the water-soluble fertilizer and then once a month thereafter. Thanks so much for your seed purchase. The biggest reason people start plants indoors is because they have a shorter growing season and they're trying to get the plants to grow four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, even 10 weeks indoors. So they put a more mature plant outdoors and therefore the plant matures more quickly and they get a harvest sooner. The biggest issue with starting plants indoors is you have to make sure you start them in large containers so their root systems don't get root bound and coil in the container. And you want to make sure that that transplant is being planted into soil that has the right temperature for the plant. Just because you put a bigger plant out early doesn't mean you're going to get a bigger plant sooner if the soil conditions are wrong. So cool weather crops like to go into soil that's 40, 50 degrees. The warm weather crops like to go into soil that's 60, 70 degrees. So you do have to start indoors with a plan that in four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, they're going to be put out into the ground when the soil temperatures are correct. Thanks so much for purchasing the seeds. I hope this video gives you more information to help you be successful in the garden. Starting seeds isn't difficult, but there are a lot of nuances and I just wanted to cover them in a little bit more detail than saying put the seeds in the ground a quarter inch deep, six inches apart. Please check out the video description for more details on all the different things we talked about. I hope you have a wonderful gardening season and please subscribe. My name is Gary Plarchuk. I am the content creator of The Rusted Garden and I have over 1500 garden videos waiting on YouTube to help you out. Thank you.